Welcome to the first episode of the Watch Brothers. My name is David and well for years I have been buying, selling, collecting, restoring watches, talking about watches all of the time. This is a hobby that actually takes up a substantial amount of my time. Uh, I am constantly posting uh, on my social media information about history of horology, new releases that we're all interested in. And today I have finally decided to launch my own YouTube channel so I can continue to share this passion and this interest with you guys. Today I want to share with you a review about a very cool watch, the Orient reference CER2A003, also known as the Orient Flight. So without further to say, Let's flip the camera and see what it has to offer. So here's our watch. It comes in this tiny little box, uh, pretty standard for most uh, Orient watches. And uh, when you open it, the first thing you notice is how much uh, inspiration they get from the 1940s uh, German pilot watches, yes, or also known as the Flieger watches, uh, more specifically Type B Flieger because uh, the mid markers are on the outer part of the dial and the hour markers are in the inner part of the dial. In terms of specifications, this watch comes with an Orient in-house movement caliper 48743, 42 hours of power reserve, no hacking and no hand winding, which means it comes with a very uh, basic movement but something that I really dig about this watch is that it comes with a screw down case back, a threaded crown and as a consequence a hundred meters of water resistance which is a lot more than these pilot watches usually come with. It also comes with a, a 316 cell stainless steel case and a hardened mineral crystal. Now let's take a look at the dimensions of this watch for which we're going to use our digital caliper and the first uh, dimension that we're going to check is the case diameter which is uh, one of the most uh, common dimensions used to determine the size of a watch. This watch comes in at around 41.7, 41.8 41 millimeters, 42 millimeters. Uh, a log width of 22 millimeters, a thickness of 11.6, and one of the most important dimensions in order to determine how good a watch wears is the lock to lock distance, which in this case is 47.45. Uh, okay. In terms of quality, I can say that this is a watch with a substantial heft to it. Yes, it comes with a leather uh, strap, very standard, nothing uh, outstanding. Yes, uh, it comes with a, its brushed buckle. In general, it comes with a brushed finish, a vertical finish uh, on the sides of the watch, a, a circular finish on the bezel, and uh, also uh, horizontal uh, brushing on the on the lugs. The only polished part is the space between the lugs. Uh, the, the crown is not signed, yes, which would have been a nice touch. Uh, but something that I really like about this watch and this type of watches is the loom. Yes, I'm going to turn off the light for a moment so we can take a look at the loom. And as you can see the watch even at mild uh, darkness, uh, it has a, a, a nice uh, glow to it. And even if we charge it a little bit uh, directly under the lamp, it'll glow even brighter. Yeah, so let's turn this off again. And as you can see, the loom is substantial. Very similar to the loom of this other watch that I'm wearing, which is the Seiko SKX007. Uh, which I'm going to also, of course, make another review later on. Moving on, um, let me put this on. Yes, I'm going to remove the Seiko SKX, put it right here, and I'm going to put this one on to see how it wears. Uh, for your reference, 
uh, I have a six and a half inch wrist, which is a uh, uh, below average, I would say. I'm a rather slim type of dude, and as you can see, this watch, um, you know, takes up uh, a substantial amount of that area on top of my wrist, uh, mostly due to to uh, a considerable lock-to-lock uh, -to -lock distance. Yes, uh, also it has a substantial diameter but for example this Seiko watch has a similar diameter but a shorter lock-to-lock -lock, which makes it wear a lot better. Also, since this uh, watch doesn't have a bezel per se, they also tend to wear a little bigger or, or at least to, to appear bigger on the wrist. Yes. Uh, here in comparison to to a watch that has a similar size but has a, a bezel. If you're interested in buying this watch you can find it at around $170 in longislandwatch.com I've also seen it in Joma shop around $150 but I think it's uh, sold out at the moment of course I'm gonna leave links in the description below for you to, to find this watch uh, it also comes in blue dial, uh, dark green dial with a PVD coated case and a cream dial. So uh, there's a lot to, to choose from. Although the classic look uh, of this uh, type of uh, Flieger watches is uh, uh, black dial with uh, white numerals. Well, to conclude the review, I'm going to talk about three things that I do like about this watch and three things that I don't like that much about this watch. The three things that I do like about this watch uh, are the loom to start. Uh, as you saw it before, it glows like an actual torch in the dark. It has a lot of real estate and a lot of uh, loom pumped in uh, into those numerals and hands. Uh, something else that I do like about this watch is the, the finishing. Yes, it has a really fine brushing on the case and overall it shows quality. Yes, it looks like a, like a quality product. Uh, and something else that I do like about this watch is the water resistance. As I told you, it's a characteristic that is not very common in these type of watches. Flieger watches are usually coming in with a water resistance of 30 to 50 meters. Uh, the three things that I don't like that much about this watch are for example, the size, which is something very subjective, yes. Um, as a matter of fact, Flieger watches are usually even bigger than this. They come in at around 44, 46, even 48 millimeters, 50 millimeters in some cases, because, I mean, their, their functionality uh, requires it uh, to, to be that big. Something else that I don't like that much about this watch is the date wheel, yes. The date wheel uh, should have been black with white numerals uh, in order to be more symmetrical and not be so disruptive with the overall design of the uh, of the watch. And um, as a matter of fact, if you want to be faithful to the history and the original design of these watches, the dial should have been completely simple and clean without any complications such as this date wheel and even without logos yes Flieger watches are commonly seen with sterile uh, dials it means with no logos at all uh, and of course something that i don't like about this watch is that the fact that the movement does not hack and does not hand wind yes uh, the hand winding uh, maybe doesn't bother me that much but the hacking I do think it's, uh, it's very necessary especially for these military type of watches in which you should be able to synchronize two watches uh, down to the second so uh, I think it's a, a very important characteristic that it is missing and that it should have well I think that's it for today I hope you enjoyed it don't forget to like this video if you actually enjoyed it share with your friends that also like watches or that are thinking on uh, beginning with this hobby of collecting watches and don't forget to subscribe if you want to continue watching this kind of content 
Uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope I can see you soon. Bye-bye.